Welcome to Friendship Baptist Church. We are so glad that you tuned in with us and we hope that you will continue to listen to us online and to stop in and see us when you can. Certainly if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you. But more than that, if we can help you in any way, we, if we can introduce you to Christ or if we can help you with your problems, if we can help you uh, live the abundant life, well, we would certainly feel honored to do that. All you have to do is contact us. And last Wednesday night, I, I talked to you about the hardest day of mine and Sherry's life was when we got the word that our, our daughter had died. And tonight, I want to switch gears. And I got a uh, chance today to talk to a lady who, uh, by world standard, would have a lot to complain about. Doesn't have any family, not a wealthy lady, owned up in years. And here's what she said. She said two things. She said, I'm not lonely, I've got my Lord. And she said, i got more blessings than I can count. So I got to thinking about that as I was driving out here tonight. And I want to read you a couple of verses, and then I am going to tell you some things that we need to think about that are blessings. I think in America we get so caught up in what we want. We get so caught up in the daily grind that we do forget to count our blessings. These old hymns that we sing, I, I love the old hymns, and one of them I remember is count your blessings, count them one by one, and you'll be amazed at what God has done, and I think we need to remember that. So I'm going to read first from 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. And then James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And then I want to skip down here and read, uh, if I can find it. Uh, let's see here. Isaiah 41, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then in the Bible, Paul tells us that we are to take every thought captive, that we are not to be gloomy gusses. In the world today, if we don't get our way, what do we do? We grumble and we complain and we fuss, and yes, we even cuss sometimes. And so I want to just give you some things that, that I kind of looked and said, hey, I think, I think I need to remember the things that I've got to be thankful for. Had one of our deacons at church here last week come up and said he had a, had a toe that was hurting. It made me think of what my father-in-law said one time. He said, I have a toe that is hurting like the dickens, but I have nine that's not hurting. And we need to be thankful for these things. And, and as we look at the world, we in America are so blessed. We have so much. We don't have to worry about food. We don't have to worry about what we're going to wear. We don't have to worry about how we're going to get places. Oh, yeah, your life may not be perfect. But I was reminded today that a lot of people in the world, they don't know what they're going to eat when they get up. They don't have the choice to go to the refrigerator. And I have a friend that lives in the Philippines, and, and he sent some pictures on Facebook about their outdoor market. No refrigeration. So you buy just what you can eat that day, if it's available. In America, we have so much to be thankful for. We have our family. We have friends. We have health. Well, preacher, my health is not, not that good. Well, listen, we have the best medical care in the world. Should we not be thankful for that? You think about how many people died years ago that would have lived if we'd have had the medical care then that we have now. Are you thankful for your home? Instead of complaining about it not being the biggest and the best, how about thanking God because Jesus said he had no place to call home. He had no home at all that he could call his own. And what about your job? Especially today, we have so many people that want to gripe and complain about their job. At least we have one. And not only do we have a job, we have the power and the strength and the good health to get up and go to work. And that is a blessing from God. There's a, a lot of people right now in the hospital, in the nursing home, home on hospice or home health that would trade places on your worst day with you and they would still come out ahead. So we need to think about that. 
What about your education? And some of these are going to make you think. Some of these are going to make you think and say, hey, is he really being serious? But yes, I am. What about a good night's sleep? That lady told me today, she said, you know, I go to bed every night with a clear conscience. And if God takes me home during the night, I've won. And if I wake up in the morning, I've won. And see, that's the way we need to go to sleep at night. And we need to thank God that we live on a planet where we can look out the window and see God. Well, I don't see God. You're not looking. Look at the trees. My, my sister and her husband sent me a, a picture of their first watermelon out of their garden this year. A big old, big old striped melon. And I got to thinking about that. That started because they put a seed in the ground. That seed rotted away and a plant came up. God watered that plant. He nourished that plant with sunshine. God grew the watermelon. That is a gift from God. We cannot do that. And yet we take everything for granted. We, we grumble when it's raining. We grumble when it's hot. We grumble when it's cold. We grumble when it's dry. We just grumble, grumble, grumble. We need to be thankful that we live in a place where we can look out and see God. And, and the seasons. I love to look at the seasons. I, I love to see the trees in the fall. To see what a master painter God is. How he can paint a portrait that man cannot duplicate. And then in the spring to see all the flowers coming up. And, and oh yeah, well we got the bugs. Listen, we got flowers. We got all the good things. Yeah, we got bugs. You know why we got bugs? Because of man's sin. But we're not going to go there tonight, okay? We want to talk about being blessings. What about a good night's sleep? What about financial stability? Well, preacher, I live week to week. There are a lot of people in the world that live hour to hour, minute to minute. They don't know where they're going to sleep. They don't know where they're going to eat. I've talked to missionaries that went to places like Haiti. And in Haiti, they'd only have power for a couple of hours a day. Then they'd cut the generator off. And he said a lot of times they'd wake up in the morning and animals had walked through the grease on the stove and, and all the bad things that you can think of happened. And all how dirty it was and how nasty it was. We have so we can wash our hands when we want to. We can take a shower. You ever thought about what a blessing a shower is? Yeah. What a blessing a bathtub is? What about your car? Your car may not be the newest and the greatest and the best, but it beats walking. God has given us all these blessings. What about technology? Yeah, I know technology gets a bad rap because Satan has come in and taken something good and made it bad. But technology is still good. In fact, if you're listening to us right now, you're listening by technology. God's word is being spread by technology, and we need to be thankful for that. What about music? What about teachers? What about giving gifts to others to help others? I, I was listening to a preacher this morning and he was talking about the compassion of Jesus. And how the compassion of Jesus was, was just not feeling sorry for them. It was getting involved in their lives. And I had much rather give a gift to help someone than to get a gift. I have everything I need. And as I look back on my life, I see where God always provided. I, I couldn't say that when I was 30 because I didn't have the knowledge and the spiritual walk with God that I do now. But I look back and I see every step of the way God provided. Does that mean it was perfect? No. Does that mean there were not struggles? No, there were plenty of struggles. But I'm here to tell you I want to thank God for the struggles because I see God in a different light when I'm struggling. I see the love of God when I'm struggling. I see the mercy of God when I'm struggling. I see the grace of God when I'm struggling. That's one thing Sherry and I learned is that even in the worst day, God is still in control. He is still a loving God. And the grace and mercy are always there whether I see it or not. And that is a testimony that we all need to have. And I'm going to give you some funny things that we need to think about being thankful for. Listen, I come up poor, okay? I, I come up in a little town in Tennessee and uh, we had outhouses. I'm thankful for indoor plumbing. Can I get an amen anywhere? 
I'm thankful for air conditioning. Listen, I'm chubby and I sweat. I am thankful for air conditioning. I'm, I'm thankful for <laughs> fuzzy socks. I'm thankful for deodorant. I'm, I'm thankful for toilet paper, for duct tape. I am thankful for uh, uh, being able to sit down and relax in my house. I am thankful for bacon. Can I get an amen on the bacon? Now listen, y'all are laughing and this is funny. But stop and think about it. Do you realize what people would give for one piece of bacon in the world? Listen, I am thankful for clean clothes. I'm, I'm thankful for spell check. I'm thankful for pictures. I'm thankful that I have telephone that I can talk to my family. I, I'm just so thankful for all these things. I'm thankful for my recliner. I can kick back and sleep and not have to worry about somebody coming in and, and shooting me. I don't have to worry about somebody coming in and stealing from me. I am thankful that I grew up in America. Can I get an amen on that? I'm thankful that I had godly parents. I'm, I'm thankful that I am at a godly church where people love each other. I am thankful for God's unconditional love. And I am thankful for the love from other Christians. I'm thankful that I can laugh. Once again, the Bible says laughter doeth good like a medicine. And, and, and granted, my jokes are not the best. I understand that. But I still get you to smile. And I still get you to laugh sometimes. And that doeth good like a medicine. Would you rather be around somebody like that or somebody that's doom and gloom all the time? If anybody had a right to be doom and gloom, it was Jesus. But you know what? Jesus went to that cross willingly. He went to that cross knowing what was going to happen. And you know what he did? He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ until he went to that cross. He didn't let it steal his joy. I'm thankful for teachers. I'm thankful for birthday cakes. I'm thankful for hot showers. And I'm thankful for the smell of fresh baked cookies. I'm thankful that I can sit down and turn on the TV or the radio and see and hear good preaching. I'm thankful there's an off button on the TV because some things are not fit to watch. I am thankful for good neighbors and I'm thankful for old friends. I am very thankful for my grandparents and I try to live a life that when I am dead and gone, my grandchildren who are young now will look back and say this, I'm thankful for a godly papa. I'm thankful that God has allowed me to have the influence that he's allowed me to have in so many places, in so many churches. I'm thankful for a hot cup of coffee. I'm thankful for family traditions of getting together and enjoying each other's fun. I'm, I'm thankful for Thanksgiving meals, <laughs> even though I eat too much. But you know what? When I was growing up, we were taught this. Every good and perfect gift comes from God and all this food is a blessing from God. And God didn't give it to us to waste. We would cook all of this and then we would take it out and take it to people and feed them after Thanksgiving. Oh, what a blessing. I'm thankful for time. I'm thankful that God has given me enough time to see my grandchildren. I'm thankful that God has given me enough time that I got saved when I was nine years old. I'm thankful that God has given me enough time to see the world like it's in today. Well, preacher, I don't understand that. I can tell you I'm thankful for that because I can see the end in sight. Amen. I can see God's Word being fulfilled every, every day. Amen. I'm thankful for campfires. I'm thankful for rainbows. You know, rainbows, my wife loves rainbows. And listen, that's another thing. The gay community has taken one of God's promises and distorted it. But that's strictly in their mind because God's rainbow still means that God loves us. Amen. It does not represent them. It represents God. Amen. I am thankful for choices. I am thankful for forgiveness. I am thankful that I have comfortable shoes. That I have glasses that I can wear. I am thankful that I can take a nap. <laughs> Uh, Lord have mercy. I remember when I was 
early teenager, my dad would come in and always go to sleep in the chair, and I'd just fuss. Dad, come on, let's go do something. Son, I'm tired. Now, if I get near my recliner, I hate to tell you, I'm gone. <laughs> and I know my dad's in heaven saying, see, I told you. I'm thankful for fresh vegetables. I'm thankful for books that I can read. I'm thankful that my wife and I can sit down and have discussions, not only about the world, but about our family and about the Bible. I'm thankful that I serve in a church with godly people who are not afraid to stand up and say, hey, we serve God and we believe this book and we will not deviate. I'm thankful that I can watch my grandchildren giggle and have fun. I'm thankful I can watch my youngest granddaughter blow bubbles and get bubble gum all over her face. I'm, th I'm thankful that, that God has given me so much and I'm thankful that he pointed this out to me again. And I want to close with this. I want to challenge you. Instead of getting a book and writing down all the bad things in the world. And listen, there's a bunch of them. But I'm going to tell you, the good in this world outweighs the bad. Because God is good and he is bigger than all the bad. Amen. So I want to challenge you to get you a book, a piece of paper, computer, whatever. And start typing up your blessings. Type up your blessings. Look at them. Get them out and read them. When you get down, when you get discouraged, get those blessings out and look at them. King David went through this. In Psalm 73, he did the same thing. He was discouraged. He looked at the world and the world was just going to, going to pieces in his eyes. He had been anointed king and he's living in caves. King Saul's trying to kill him and he looked at God and he said, God, wait a minute, I don't, I don't understand this. I don't feel blessed, God. The, the world is wicked. They're, they got stuff. I don't have nothing. The world is wicked and they're laughing, having a good time. I'm living in a cave. I'm running for my life. God, you anointed me. What's going on? And then in Psalm 73, it says this, And David went to the sanctuary. What does that mean? He went and he spent time with God. And, and when he spent time with God, he then remembered his blessings. He then remembered what was waiting for him. And you read the last part of that psalm and he says, I get it. I get it. Those people that have everything now, it's going to be gone one day. When the rich man woke up and being in torment, he wasn't worried about his stuff. He wanted a drop of water. So listen, listen, count your blessings. And know that if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have the biggest blessing that there could ever be. Amen. And I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about a relationship with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who died on that cross for you and I, the one who said he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, the one who now lives in us. And listen, he is the one who will give you peace. He is the one that will take those blessings and make them alive in your life. He is the one that will get you through the storm. He is the one that will get you through the valley. He is the one that says, cast all my cares on him because he's big enough to handle them. I have no cares that he cannot handle. And if I am carrying my cares, I am not doing what he told me to do. So count your blessings. Count your blessings. And I'm going to close with this little little funny. And I said this one time at church, and it took them a while to catch on to it. But I told the men, I said, look, guys, quit complaining about your wife. It's her mistakes that kept her from getting a better husband. So y'all think about that. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you. Lord, we thank you that we have all these blessings that we, that we take for granted. And God, we have thousands, millions of blessings that we don't even know about. We have things going on in our body right now, God, that you are in control of that we have no idea. And God, we thank you for that. Now, Lord, I pray that you continue to bless our little church by the road. I pray, God, that you will continue to send guests and visitors that will become home folks to us. And God, I pray that the name of Jesus would be lifted up. Lord, I pray that anyone listening right now, if they do not know Jesus as their Savior, that God, they would get in touch with somebody, some godly, born-again person, and say, hey, would you help me? Now, Lord, once again, we thank you for all the blessings. We thank you for this church. We thank you for loving us. But more than anything, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.